Welcome back to Improve Your Photography YouTube channel. And today it's all about color saturation. It's all about the saturation levels of the color in your photographs. And I'll go through various examples and we'll be able to see the difference. And we'll talk a little bit about where it's most effective. And before we dive in, hit the subscribe and tap the notification bell so you can stay in the loop with all these photography videos. Often we look at a photograph and you go, oh my goodness, it just it just pops out. The colors, the colors sing if you like. It's it's vibrant and alive. And one of the adjustments that makes that happen is simply the intensity or the vibrancy of the colors in your photographs. So increasing the saturation makes colors more vibrant while decreasing the saturation it reduces them, it mutes them. And literally, if you go all the way down the scale, it literally creates a grayscale desaturated effect, which is essentially a black and white photograph. Very soft, generally speaking. But it is a black, essentially a black and white image because it's taken away all the color saturation. So just before we do go ahead and adjust these photographs for color saturation, just to be clear, the difference between altering saturation is about enhancing or muting the intensity of the colors in your photographs. Whereas contrast, it's about the difference between the darkest and the lightest parts of your image. You're adjusting that. You're making that by altering the contrast, you're altering the difference between the dark and the light areas by altering the color saturation. You're either enhancing or muting the intensity of the colors. So let's press on. I want to put up a couple of shots where they're straight out of camera and they are already with color saturations and with a photographic tip, if you like. That this shot here with the cup and the, the steam, the hot, the hot drink, the hot cup of coffee, where, or the hot cup of tea, I think it actually was, the steam coming off of off it was just all the shot, and then you've got the garden in the background. And we've got enough colour saturation for certainly from my point of view, that colour saturation is very strong already. And one of the ways to increase color saturation when you're in a situation where there is vibrant colors or there's colors going on and there is the sunlight's on the go, by reducing, you, you've got your meter reading and then by reducing it by half a stop or even one stop, and indeed in some cases even more, but typically half a stop or one stop, and that will enrich the colors, that will increase the color saturation, if you like. These are just some examples of where it's already got color saturation from shooting in camera. And that's in an ideal world, that's the way we'd be doing it. So we're in a situation where we haven't been able to fully capture the color saturation that we would perhaps like when we've taken the actual photograph. Or in hindsight, we look at photographs and go, oh, maybe a little bit of extra color vibrancy and extra color saturation would assist this. So I'm deliberately starting this off with a very simple image to illustrate just how little adjustment is sometimes required in color saturation to have a big effect. So we're in the Photos app. I've opened up this particular photograph in the Photos app and I come up here to the icon and go into editing. And from the editing, once I've clicked on that, I come up to adjustments. And over on the right hand side here, I'm using a laptop at the moment. The layout is for a laptop. And I come over here and under the heading of color, we've got this one adjustment of saturation. Now, with this photograph, if we lift the color saturation, even just a little bit, it can really enhance. That, to me, has made a real difference. And as I often say with all these various adjustments you can make, by taking it right up to the scale, 
it gives you a real sense of what the kern, the actual thing does. So if we bring it right back, that's without alteration. That's with 100% alteration, which to me is, is dreadful and discolored and it's unpleasant. But it's all personal choice with this editing. And for me, just by lifting it up, where are we? Hang on. That makes a difference, but I'd like to go up a little bit more. But that's too much for me there. That's discoloring the original. So for me, just giving it that lift off there. So we're at 18. And that just gives it that extra bit of vibrancy. I come along, I save as a copy because I always want to keep the original in case I want to do change my mind or want to edit further from the original. Always keep the original, I save as a copy. And indeed, for me, it's going to downloads. Of course, you can be saving this anywhere. It can be in USB stick, it can be in the cloud, it can be anywhere, whatever pleases you. But in this case, I've gone to downloads, or I could have gone to a USB stick, which is another choice that I often make. But just giving that lift makes a difference. In the previous section, you might have seen the same coffee cup. It was a different day, different light. So here we are on another day enjoying a coffee and we've got very different light, so it's very flat. Now this is the sort of thing where the color vibrancy can really assist. So again, we come along up to the icon for the editing. We go to adjustments, click on adjustments, and then we come over to color and saturation. That's the one we're altering. And this is where it was a very bright yellow cup in real life. And look at that. That really does make a big difference. Now, unlike in the previous shot of the sand, where we were giving a moderate alteration, this is a case where going up quite high. Now, we don't want to go up that high. See, the color of the coffee is changing too much for my personal taste. I don't like that. Now, if we go right up, we can see where we get. We, <clears throat> we're almost getting too abstract, if you like. Now, if you like that, that's fantastic. And by all means, take advantage of it. But for my personal taste, there's the original, but clearly it's very, it's very flat. And we're going to lift this whole image by increasing the color saturation. And for me, it's just around about where are we? Original. That's it for me there. So there we are at 48. And it really gives that image a lift. Now, there was nothing I could have done about the natural light. I was shooting that as a cafe. But by coming back with the shot, popping it in color saturation and adjusting it upwards makes all the difference. Now, we're all at the time talking about increasing color saturation, but be mindful also that you can decrease color saturation. That looks dreadful. But if we go all the way down, we end up with all the colors now being dragged out of it, and we're left with black and white, and a very soft black and white for two reasons. A, the image itself starts off soft because the light is, is, a, is a very even, low, gentle light. But by simply sucking the color out without adjusting contrast or anything else, we have a very pale black and white effect. Just something to keep in mind from a subtraction point of view. Sometimes it can work really well. In this case, I don't particularly like it. I'm using this as an illustration to point out. But what I do like is the improvement of the, the photograph. Maybe I've gone down a little lower this time. That's the one I like. So we're at 43 now. I'm not sure what we were before. Maybe we're a little higher, but that is nice. And that's brought the vibrancy. See, the color saturation adjustment there has really brought this photograph to life. So again, I come across, got the save options. This is in the Windows Photo app. Come along, go into downloads for me. And it's saved. And I've opened up the image in the Photos Windows app, come over here up to the top left, the edit of the image, coming over to adjustments, down to saturation color, and then saturation. That's the only alteration we're making with these photographs.
now. But God again, it was an overcast. It was an overcast day. So here we are. We're going to start lifting this color. See already. Now we've got to be careful because at the top here, this is still working quite nicely. But now we're going to go overboard with the green moss on the roof. So we have to be mindful of both. That's the original. So I don't want to overdo it. And so in the end, this for my personal taste will dictate how high we go with the color saturation. I don't want to go too artificial. So again, if we want to go right up to 100%, you see what happens? Look at the leaf, look at the green. Very, it has a, <laughs> an extraordinarily stark effect, but what a difference that makes. But to me, that's just too much. It's not what I'm after. So there's the original. Where are we at? I reckon that's the original. That's enough for me. In fact, a bit less. Where are we? I like that. That's it for me. 34 on this one. So that's the that's how the adjustment one looks. And just to remind you, that's the original shot out of camera. And that's what we're going for with adding color saturation. See how it brings out all this area up here. By the way, if you want to see the original in the Photos app, what to do is just come along and put the cursor. I'm working again off a laptop. I bring the cursor over and I can just press. And you see down here, it's, I'm now viewing the original. And then when I let it go, it goes back to the adjusted of whatever I've set these to. And in this case, we're working with color saturation only on 34 for this image. So again, click it. There's your viewing of the original. Bang. Now, again, all these things are very personal taste. That, for me, I like that image. For some, it might be the moss is too bright, so you just bring it down a notch. And it still adds vibrancy. Let's have a look. That's the original. That's with the adjustment. Original, see how, see the effect. If you focus on, on, on this area, that's the original, and that's with the adjustment. I like it. Again, I'm coming over to the save options. I save as a copy because I want to keep my original. Go to downloads, click save. Because it's the exact same one I've already got in downloads, I need to adjust the file name so it doesn't replace it. So I just in a letter I add in a letter E which stands for edited and that's saved. I like it. I like it a lot. So in this shot it's a reflection of a building in water and we come over to edit and adjustments and again we've got our color saturation down here and What's going to happen with this one? If we go extreme just to get the full effect, wow, becomes a very different statement. And this is one of those rare occasions in my mind, for my personal taste, we're going to the full extreme. It's, it has an element of abstract in the first place, being the reflection in the water and the way at the bottom here it dissolves because of the extra ripples in the water. And I find this quite effective by going quite extreme. So this is one of the cases I'm all for being very sort of quite low key with the increase. If in doubt, by the way, always go the conservative number. Like if you're looking at a number, this is actually not the greatest image to show it on because the high number where it is where it works. But if you're ever in doubt, just go the slightly conservative one because it's very easy to overdo these adjustments. But in this case... I like the full extreme. So we're at 100%. I like it a lot. So this is an example where pushing the boundaries right to the 100% is working. So I save the image, click save, and I save as a copy. I keep the original, and I go to downloads, and that is saved. Yeah, looks great. 
And that's all done by increasing the saturation. And that's all we've done. It was out of camera, JPEG. This is, it hasn't been processed in any other way. Straight JPEG image, bring it into the Windows Photo app, increase the saturation, bang. Very straightforward. We don't need to be spending hours and hours and hours to give our images an extra spark, an extra boost. So with this shot, we've got a picture of the wall and it's different levels, different textures, if you like. Come across, open it up. In the editing, go to adjustments. Scroll down, I'm working again off a laptop. Come over to saturation. And just a little does a lot. Now, if we go right up again, wow, it turns it into a very different statement, a very different work of art, if you like. Look what it does. It artificially pushes all those colors into a whole other space. Now, for me, that's the original. That's the extreme. And by the way, just a reminder, if you want to see the original without moving the slider back, you just click and you see down here it says viewing original. So that's the original. Not in this that you need to see that sign. It's very clear. <laughs> and that's the extreme push. Now, to me, unlike the other image, that doesn't work. That's way too much. So I bring it back. And it depends. See how personal it is. It, to me, it's just a slight. Yeah, that's interesting too. But I don't want to push the colors too artificially there. I'm going to give it just a lift. And to me, that's it. Yep. So on this one, it's 31 for me. So again, we come across, we want to see the original. That's the original image. That's the adjusted saturation. No other alteration with the image. That's it. It's a JPEG, out of camera, bang. Come over to Save Options at the top. Save as a copy. I'm keeping the original again. Going to Downloads. Save. As I keep saying, you can also be popping that on a USB stick or putting it in any file on your computer that you want, in the cloud, wherever you would like to store your photos. And that's altering the one thing, color saturation. Now this image of the glass with the water has already got strong saturation. So what's going to happen when we come across here, open up the editing, adjustments, color saturation. What's going to happen to an image that's already got a lot of color saturation, the color vibrancy? As we push it, if we push it to 100, you can see while it becomes very artificial in its colors, if you like, it's pushed, it's very obvious that it's been pushed, that that color is not natural. That's the original, but even though we've got vibrancy to start with, this is one of the images where adding even more vibrancy adds to it. Normally, I don't add saturation to an image that where I feel it's it's got lovely color saturation that I've captured in camera, if you like, at the time of getting the shot. But with this, I quite like going up a bit. So there's that. That's at 44 color saturation on the scale of the photo apps increase. That's the original. That's the new one. Yeah. See how it brings that red out. Incredible. And I love the juxtaposition of the red and the rest of the image. So for me, I'm going to leave it like that. And yes, it has worked. This was shot on iPhone, which is why it's on the different format. So I'm saving as a copy, which you need to when it's got this different format, as far as the Windows app is concerned. Come over to Downloads, and that's it. Now here's another image where I feel like it doesn't really need to be increased much at all because it's already got color saturation. But we come over to Edit. Now again, notice this sign, because it's a, it's um, the format is from the iPhone, I need to save it as a copy. It can't save it as its current format. 
come over to adjustments, color saturation. Let's see what happened. Oh, see now while while it now starts to look quite um, unnatural, if you like, once you get to a certain level, it starts to look unnatural. But look how those colors pop out. Now, again, it's all such personal taste. But for me, visually as an image, this works. It looks really good. So we start off with something with the sun pouring through, and then we're just going to lift. Now, it's very tempting to go bananas. And you can, if you like that, fantastic. Enjoy the images that you're creating. But for me, I like to go a bit more natural look, and I would leave it at that. But notice the boost it does give. I'm surprised with this that it gives such a lovely boost. Nice. So that's that. That's the original. By simply putting the cursor over the image and holding the mouse down, or indeed, if you, I'm, I'm on laptop and I'm using an external mouse, or I could be pressing the the pad. Come along, just hold it down. There you go. What a difference! I like it. I like it a lot. So come along, save us copy. So you can see that in some cases. Lifting the color vibrancy, color saturation by a small amount makes all the difference that's needed. And in other occasions, you can go bananas and lift it to that full 100% and go, oh, wow. And it's all very much personal taste. And put your images in the Microsoft Photos app. And I'm simply using this photo app, not because I get any benefit by it, because of the simplicity of it all. Here I am working on a laptop, it comes with the laptop, and it's nice, simple, straightforward. Now there's a million apps, million softwares out there that you can edit your photos in. And if you're currently working with another software, that's fantastic, another app, absolutely awesome. Go to the color saturation aspect in that and work with that. But if you don't have a favorite, going into the Microsoft Photo app, is it's so simple, it's so straightforward. That's why I'm, I'm using it today, simply as a nice, easy access. You don't need to stress over all this photo editing. Huge amounts are done around it all, and you can get very complex, and you, in, in that case, you may well need a more complex, sophisticated app to edit your photos. But an incredible amount can be done without that more sophisticated editing gear. Pop your own images in and experiment. Find what is the sweet spot for you. So each photo is going to be different and experiment what you like. There's no right or wrong. If you like pushing the, the color saturation up further than perhaps I would, that's great. Enjoy those images. There's no right or wrong in this. It's about creating an image that you are happy with that you are proud of that you like i'm my emphasis is more about not pushing it beyond anything that looks too unnatural that tends to be my personal guideline but there's no there's no laws about this you know have fun with it experiment and again by this thing of saving a copy you've always got the original to go back to and rework if you want to if you have found this video helpful, please do give it the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're interested in the description of this video is a link if you want to get access to my five ways to improve your photography fast. Otherwise, I will speak with you in the next video.